What's up guys, it's Ivan and today I am going to read to you a statement of purpose for the PhD in stem cell biology and regenerative medicine at Stanford University. While I read the statement of purpose, I'm going to give my commentary on what I think you need to do to improve your statement of purpose for graduate school. In high school, I frequently interacted with students in the special education program. These students taught me about the importance of providing opportunities for disabled members of the community to speak for themselves. As a newly admitted freshman at the University of California, Berkeley, I was excited to apply the lessons I learned from these disabled students while continuing to learn from the disabled community. However, when I first arrived on campus, I realized that UC Berkeley did not have a special education program as a result. Our campus had a much lower percentage of disabled students than a percentage of disabled California residents. It was surprising that a school as large and as world-renowned as Berkeley did not have an adequate representation of disabled students. I therefore made it my goal to connect with the disabled community and became involved with UC Berkeley Best Buddies. Best Buddies is an internationally recognized organization that works to form one-on-one -on -one connections with individuals who have intellectual and developmental disabilities such as cerebral palsy and autism spectrum disorder. For two years, I served as a chapter president. During this time, I increased my membership from 20 to 50 participants and started our first ever Best Buddies Winter Ball. And for these efforts, I am a three time Kelt Alumni Leadership Award recipient. Throughout my involvement in the club, I learned about extremely intimate and personal stories about people with disabilities and how it impacted their lives. Learning about each individual's story sparked my curiosity about the developmental origin of disabilities. My intimate connection with the disabled community motivated me to pursue a Bachelor's of Arts in Genetics at UC Berkeley. Throughout my undergraduate research experiences, it has been truly rewarding to learn about the biological mechanisms that impact those with whom I have a deep personal relationship. In the first two paragraphs, the applicant talks about their personal experiences and their personal connection to their research interests. Because they are applying to a PhD program, they want to first show why they are interested in the research they want to further you know, investigate as a PhD student. And so they speak about how their interest really started in high school. But I want you to note that they only used about two sentences to describe their high school experience and then they led right into their undergraduate experience. At this level of education, the committees don't really care about what happened before undergrad. So anything in high school is not really as relevant to the now, right? But this applicant did a really good job of infusing their high school experience that led to UC Berkeley experiences. And so they used one to two sentences to do that. Then they jumped right into their topic, right? So we see that they are interested in working with people with disabilities in this this case, learning about the developmental mechanisms within the disabled community. So they're very specific when they're describing what they want to do. The name of this PhD program is the Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine PhD program at Stanford University. So in that title, we don't really get, you know, the disability piece, right? So as an applicant and as a, as a committee member, they might see this as a unique research interest. And so I'm expecting as a reader for the, for the applicant to talk more further about disabilities and developmental mechanisms in the rest of their experiences as an undergrad in research. So this applicant then ties in their experiences working with disabled communities through the Best Buddies program. And I want you to know when they describe this in paragraph two, they mention their accolades, right? So I always stress in all my videos that the statement of purpose should show the story behind your accolades and they don't want you to just, you know, reiterate your resume or CV. So they want you to tell the stories behind those and this applicant does a really good job of doing that so they sprinkle in that they got they're the three-time Cal Alumni Leadership Award recipient for this work but it doesn't consume the entire paragraph they sprinkle it in there just to kind of show the impact that they're making so whenever you are describing your accolades in here it should be one sentence or less and it should showcase impact versus just showing off your accolades they don't really care about that they care about the story the impact your work is making in the field. Then at the end, the applicant does a really good job of tying this experience into their research interests. So they end by saying that this experience motivated and inspired them to pursue a Bachelor's of Arts in Genetics at UC Berkeley with the particular focus of research in biological mechanisms of disabilities. And so as a reader, I'm going to expect to learn more about that throughout the statement of purpose. Eager to explore the developmental origins of disabilities, I sought out my first research experience in the laboratory of Dr. Benjamin Blackman at UC 
UC Berkeley in the Department of Plant and Microbial Biology. Here I study the genetic adaptation of sunflowers by performing bench work and field work in the UC Berkeley greenhouse. The Blackman lab hypothesized that there's a genetic difference in how plants of various climates coordinate heliotropism and tendency of plants to follow the sun. To test this hypothesis, I used the image software NIH ImageJ to measure the solar tracking ability of wild sunflowers from across the United States. My findings showed that flowers from colder and darker regions are more closely followed the sun compared to plants from brighter regions. Even though plants are very different from humans, it was fascinating to learn that both organisms have genetically regulated biological mechanisms and that similar techniques can be used to investigate these mechanisms. This paragraph is very interesting because as you can tell, it has nothing to do with humans, it has nothing to do with biological mechanisms of disabilities, but it does showcase a couple things. It showcases that this applicant is invested in learning their research process. So even though their experience here was about sunflowers and more like plant-based biology stuff, they were showcasing their initiative to gain that research experience to learn about the process. So as you can tell in this paragraph, they were detailed in terms of what they actually did in the lab. So they described the overall purpose of their work. They described how they collected data, what the findings were. And then briefly at the end, they try to tie it back into their research interests on humans, developmental biology questions, as well as disabilities, right? So I want you to do something similar in your statement of purpose, even though your research might not match what you want to get into in terms of your field in a PhD program. This is a great example of how you can do that if your research don't match or if you're planning on changing fields. Although I enjoyed learning basic research skills such as running a PCR and extracting data in the Blackman lab, I was eager to find research opportunities addressing human developmental disorders and, and diseases. During the summer of 2019, I applied for an internship in the immunology department at Johnson & Johnson and shifted my focus to studying the mechanisms of inflammatory bowel disease, IBD. My project focused on the role of a zinc sensing GPCR in a mouse stomach and intestinal morphology. Because many IBD patients suffer from zinc deficiency, I hypothesized that dysregulation of this GPCR contributes to the changes in stomach morphology observed in IBD. I found that the functional loss of this GPCR results resulted in an increase in mucus secreting goblet cells within stomach and intestinal crypts. This is significant as it suggests that dysregulation of this GPCR contributes to IBD phenotypes. During this internship, I learned techniques like immunohistochemistry and mammalian cell culture, which allowed me to visualize the increase in goblet cells in mouse tissue. At the end of the summer, I participated in the company-wide research presentation where I had the opportunity to practice my scientific communication and public speaking skills. Speaking with other Johnson & Johnson scientists and hearing about their research and academic trajectories allowed me to envision myself in a career in biotechnology. So in this paragraph, we see a more targeted focus on what the applicant wants to research at the PhD level. So we learn a little bit about their summer research internship at Johnson & Johnson, which is a large corporate company and industry that conducts research. So already we see that the applicant is a competitive applicant because Johnson & Johnson's a large brand name and this applicant was able to get an internship in research at the lab and so through this research the applicant had a focused project so we learned a little bit about what they did with the project and as you can tell something that I want you to do in your application is I want you to be detailed about what you actually did in terms of your hypothesis your questions the results and also how you conduct the research right so you want to provide the reader the committee with an idea that you actually know how to conduct research that you are comfortable or that you have learned the research process and how you went about executing every part of the research process and this applicant does a really good job of explaining that in this paragraph here at the end of the paragraph we learned that the applicant also presented their work to other professionals at Johnson & Johnson and so this gives the committee an idea that the applicant can actually present and communicate their research which is going to be a valuable skill that you're going to need as a PhD student then this applicant 
applicant closes the paragraph by stating how this experience have led them to a PhD or their future career. In this sense, they learned about the industry side of research. And so I want you to end your paragraph with either why that experience contributes to your pursuit of a PhD or how it has kind of shaped your career interests. Starting my junior year at Berkeley, I sought out research opportunities that merged molecular biology and genetics. I joined the Andrew Dillon lab, which studies the mechanisms of aging and age-related disease in this thing I can't pronounce. For the past year, I have studied the mechanisms of the unfolded protein response in the endoplasmic reculum. The spliced active form of transcription factor XBP1S is a key component in the most evolutionary conserved branch of the UPR. Previous this work has shown that overexpression of XBP1S in glial cells rescues the age-dependent loss of the UPPER and leads to a cell non-autonomous response in the distal intestine. Recent research suggests that neuropeptides are the secreted molecule in this signaling mechanism. During August of 2020, I was admitted to the Molecular and Cell Biology Honors Program, which offers outstanding seniors the opportunity for for recognition of the research through an oral presentation and a thesis project. Both opportunities which will allow me to strengthen my scientific communication skills. The goal of my senior thesis project is to understand which neuropeptide genes are functioning in this UPR mechanism. I have established a novel tool that allows for RNA uptake ability in glial cells from RNA inferences. I am the sole researcher in charge of planning, executing, and deciphering results of a large-scale RNA screen of neuropeptide genes. I Identification of these genes will provide insight into the regulation of hypothalamus-driven processes. Because I anticipated that the COVID-19 pandemic would greatly impact my time in the lab, I worked this summer to create a neuropeptide library of over 160 neuropeptide genes, which I found from literature searching using PubMed. Although I have just returned to the lab this November, my excitement to complete my project has remained uninterpreted, as well as reaffirmed by my desire to pursue a PhD in the biomedical sciences. My experience in the Dillon lab has been critical in my understanding of how a scientific question becomes a research topic, how this research question is examined, and how the results of the experiments prompt further questions. So this paragraph is really strong from the applicant, and although I don't come from a science background, I can kind of understand what they are trying to portray in their statement of purpose. Obviously, the committee members that are going to be reading the statement of purpose are going to be experts in the field, so they're going to know exactly what all these acronyms, all these hard-to-pronounce words mean, and how they interact in the science world, right? So that should be your key. Your key should be, or your audience should be, a committee member or committee or committee members who understand the field. And so the applicant does a really good job of really showcasing their skill sets in terms of their knowledge of the field. So they start off by explaining the literature behind their topic. Then they go into explaining how they went about investigating this topic. So they did this through the honors thesis program at Berkeley. And and they explained what questions they were going to tackle in terms of their research. They also mentioned that they have this tool that they designed or that they're going to implement to find answers. So as we know, Stanford is a prestigious university in the United States and it's very competitive to get in. And so this applicant here is doing a really good job of explaining that they're also a competitive applicant because here this applicant says that they designed a tool that's going to help them answer their research questions. So the person's already creating novel tools, novel research, answering questions that haven't been answered in the literature. So they are filling a gap in this knowledge, in this larger um, body of work, right? So as a PhD student, that is what you're going to be doing. And so this applicant's already showing that they have been successful in doing that as an undergraduate student. It's making them a more competitive applicant. Then at the end, the applicant does a good job of kind of showcasing that they want to further explore this research by just simply stating one sentence that they're still excited to perform this work at the PhD level. My diverse research experiences have fueled my curiosity of the molecular mechanisms of human diseases. Stanford Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine graduate program is the best place for me to perform biomedical research as it offers interdepartmental flexibility and collaboration between physicians and scientists. There are a number of research laboratories at Stanford that merge my interest into genetics, cancer, and stem cell biology. Particularly, I am interested in Dr. Ash Alizadeh, who studies tumor progression and therapy response. Due to my interest in 
genetics of cancer. Because of my interest in stem cells and disease, I am also intrigued by the work of Dr. I can't pronounce his name, who studies stem cells interactions with microenvironments. Work by Dr. Maximilian Dion is also of interest as I am curious to explore different signaling pathways as they relate to disease. Aside from these three faculty members, there are many more faculty throughout the stem cell biology program and within the larger Stanford Biosciences community who would be excellent mentors and prepare me well for a future career in biomedical research. Stanford's graduate program is unique in that it offers the flexibility of a large program while also providing the support typical of a smaller program. With my diverse research experiences in genetics and immunology, I will have the opportunity to meaningfully contribute to biomedical research as a PhD student at Stanford. So this is the why Stanford and why this program paragraph. And so in this paragraph, it is important for you to mention two to three faculty whose research interest matches yours. And the reason why is because this mentor is going to help you reach every single milestone of your PhD program and they're going to be the expert in your field. They're going to be able to guide your work and help you expand the field with your research. So if you don't have a mentor that fits your research interest, it's going to be hard for you to be successful in that program. So that's why in this paragraph, you have to name at least two to three um, faculty members, describe their research and how their research and expertise can help fulfill your interests and your career goals. And so as applicant does a really good job of doing that by describing three different faculty members in this program at Stanford, and then they describe how their work and why their work matches is their interest. Then the applicant also does a good job of saying that although that these three faculty members do align with their interests, there's a lot other faculty that you know will serve the same expertise to them. So if you're an applicant that you know has a bunch of faculty members that could do the work that you're doing and you want to explain why this program paragraph, you can do something similar to this applicant where you can have a statement that says that not only these three faculty members will serve as a great mentor for you, but also other people in the program could serve as a mentor as you progress through your PhD. I also like the fact that the applicant mentioned that they could collaborate with physicians and scientists. You know, in the biomedical scientist space, you want to also have the expertise of practicing doctors. And so I really like how they mentioned just that little brief statement. My experience with the disabled community and my passion for research has motivated me to pursue a career in biotechnology. In the future, I would like to contribute to clinical trial research as it is meaningful for me to work with individuals affected by the disease of study. In addition to the innovative research opportunities at Stanford, I look forward to becoming involved with the INCLUS Ability Program, which focuses on increasing disability visibility at Stanford. This initiative has long been involved with projects to increase campus accessibility, which is something that I am very passionate about due to my involvement in Best Buddies. Stanford's Cell and Developmental Biology PhD program provides a unique opportunity for me to contribute to my training and contribute to diversity initiatives on campus. I strongly believe that Stanford is the best place for me to grow as a biomedical scientist and advocate for the disabled community. In the concluding paragraph, the applicant does a really good job of reiterating their career goals and what they want to do with their PhD. So we learn that the applicant wants to work in the biotech industry and that they want to continue to produce like do clinical trials to improve the lives of the disabled community. And so we see them tie back to the introduction, right? So they mentioned best buddies again, they mentioned the disabled community, and so they're tying it all back to Together. So all these experiences in research have led me to want to work in biotech as a clinical trial researcher and how that is going to impact the disabled community. So they don't lose sight of their target audience in terms of impact that they mentioned in the intro. All right, guys, so that concludes my video on reading the statement of purpose for the stem cell biology and regenerative medicine PhD program at Stanford University. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions or suggestions of what this applicant could have done better in their statement of purpose. Yes, this applicant did get into this prestigious Stanford program in this field, but there's always room for improvement. So if you have any of those comments, place them down below and I will converse with you in the comment section. If you want support with your statement of purpose, I do offer a statement of purpose review service with the freelance company called Fiverr, which is linked down below. And I look forward to working with you this fall. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.